The flight of insects uh, provides pollination in the orchard. Uh, how do insects fly? The mathematical calculations show that an insect wing, the wings of insects, should only be able to carry half that much weight. So how do they, uh, how do they fly? You know, a bumblebee can't fly. He's too big. Shouldn't be able to fly by calculations. Uh, anybody ever get stung by a bumblebee? You did? I did once. How many times did you? Twice. Twice? Oh, twice is too many. Once is enough. I was playing in the yard of a neighbor. I saw the bumblebees going under a brush pile. So I decided they can't fly, so I'll just stand here and look at them. But one was off in the corner. He flew and zapped me, and that's enough for a lifetime. So they really can fly. How do they fly? Watch this. According to conventional analysis, insects generate only about one-third to one-half of the lift needed to carry their weight. Now it has been discovered that it's the leading edge vortex. What's a vortex? It's a little tornado, a little miniature tornado, a little circle of wind and, and debris, a little vortex, a little circle of wind. A leading edge vortex generates extra lift by lowering the atmospheric pressure in that specific area. In insects, these leading edge vortexes generate the extra lift needed because the vortex stays stuck to the leading edge for the wing long enough for propagation. Here's an illustration of that. It's just awesome. So the complicated maneuvers exercised by the wings, by the insect and his wings, generates a leading edge vortex, a little tornado, and uh, that creates a slight vacuum, and so that adds additional lift. Some of the experiments we're going to be running in the biosphere, there's so many exciting experiments we're going to be running. Some of them will have to do with how much easier it is for a bee, where you'll need bees for pollination. How much easier it is for them to fly under those atmospheric conditions with greater atmospheric pressure. We're going to have hummingbirds there. We'll be able to, with the right film, with the right video system, able to monitor how many times they flap their wings. They perform figure eights with their wings and also the vortex. So that's the reason they can zip here and there, et cetera, et cetera. Author Zafardi adds, insect wings have a very complex motion, rotating, and changing the camber. These features require sophisticated programming from intelligent design. Able to change the camber? In Australia, there's a group of people who never go to school. They probably have never seen a schoolhouse unless missionaries might build one in the outback in Australia. What's the name of those people? The Aborigines. But they are incredibly intelligent. They're able to make boomerangs with the right camber so that they throw it toward the kangaroo or whatever. And if they miss, the boomerang comes back to them. The camber on the surface does much the same as the bee wing to keep it not only on course, but to keep it aloft. Where did they learn that? They just know it innately. Math is innately programmed into the very fabric of human thought. Ants can count. Did you know that? A number of creatures are able to count. Ants are able to make a bridge across a chasm so their buddies can get across, but they give their lives to make the bridge. And they stack only so many ants, they don't need to stack anymore. It works. They know how to build bridges. They're engineers. They know math. Wow. It's all a matter of design. Here's a beautiful little devil, the fly. 
What good is a fly? They're pretty good at driving us crazy, aren't they? Um, anybody want to suggest what flies are good for? What? Well, food supply for other insects and for frogs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but they share our pests. So let's see if we can cast them in the light of the original pre-flood world. We're going to be able to run some experiments in the biosphere related to this. Flies have an ability to biodegrade scraps that we can't see. It's the reason they light on us sometimes, because we exude toxins and poison, and they're attracted to that. They're attracted to our tables, they're attracted to the food supply in the room, and they clean up more than the other creatures do because they follow us around. <laughs> and uh, they're just cute little devils, but not all that cute. 